Okay, so my name is Alex Matthews. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, the presentation is called Dynamic by Default. Um, you'll see why in a bit. Um, we're not supposed to introduce where we come from, but I came from BBH, uh, and I've worked in digital marketing companies, and I've, I'm a techie, I'm a geek, I'm a nerd. Um, uh, but the reason I say that is because it's kind of it's contextually relevant um, to, to what we've done and, and what we've, the approach we've taken. So yes, yeah, so on February the 1st, we joined uh, Jason Co. I've also been working with Jason Co. and other, and other people um, for quite a long time in my creative agency type roles. Um, and we created this new division uh, called Dynamic. Um, we have a little office in Marleybone, kind of a bit of a, like a loft space kind of thing. Um, and um, you know, we've, we've set up and we're up and running. Um, and like I said, we've been there for three months or so. Um, we are a global division, so we're in the UK for two reasons. One, we've got more digital screens here than anywhere else, and two, I live here. Um, uh, but our, what our focus is, we're focused on what goes in the screen. So, and I know lots, a lot of the other presentations have been long, you know, have talked about that as well. We've also talked about programmatic, etc. But um, as opposed to sort of Jace Deco normally finding space, buying, making space, and then selling that space, we're focused on what goes in it, and particularly. We're here to make dynamic uh, and contextual ads easy for brands. So we'll see why, and we'll see, we'll see as I go through. Uh, but that's kind of why we're here. And dynamic by default is our kind of strap line. That's, that's what we want to see. So it's all going quite well for Digital at Home. We've heard all the various presentations, actually, isn't it? Let's all have a glass of champagne later on. Um, and this, this photo was taken at the launch of the LDN network for Jace Deco up in the uh, walkie-talkie building. Um, absolutely fantastic from a Jace Deco point of view and, and all the other media owners, it's all going well. We know we've got 500 million impressions a week in the UK, 50% of the country is reached and 50, we have 50% of the impressions in the UK. Lots of lovely good stats, I'm not going to do any more, well there's a couple more. Um, but it's all going generally quite well and hooray for the ad blockers. So thank goodness for that, that lot coming along. Something like 9 million people in the UK apparently use ad blocking software in some way, shape, or form. This is all good for us. Um, and I, then I sort of thought, well, how do I sum this up? And I, so I Googled Wahoo, and I like just putting random images off Google. So I Googled Wahoo, and this came up. That's called a Wahoo fish, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, Wahoo for that. We're all doing quite well. Um, and the industry's, industry's growing a, a bit. Uh, quite well. I think we've gone, had 10% increase in organic growth in the first quarter in Jason Co. Fantastic. He looks like my old boss. I'm going to have to ring, I'm going to send this to my old boss. He looks spitting image. Um, however, online advertising is also doing quite well, and that's going up by 20% or so each year on year, and people like Facebook are taking a massive share of that. Uh, obviously, Google and Twitter. Um, and all of the stuff that they're doing is contextually driven and targeted. <coughs> it's all based around their audiences. You can segment, you can do everything you want on Facebook and all these other platforms. Um, but we know that in Digital Out of Home, we can do the same. Um, we can do, this, this was a Posterscope survey that said if, if, you, if, you, uh, if you use dynamic, contextually relevant ads, um, you get better, better message recall, a better creative perception, just people just feel better about the ad, uh, and you get, uh, sorry about that, that's gone on the next slide, um, better spontaneous recognition and better prompted recognition. Um, we did another survey in, on a Tesco smart screens in Twickenham, just putting up an ad for Cadbury's dairy milk increased sales by 8%, great. Putting up uh, the same ad but tweaked so that we had some of the sales data and we put the word Twickenham up there, added another 8% to the sales. Really, really, really basic stuff, um, but it, it, it clearly drives sales. So we know all that, um, but this uh, is a bit worrying. The whole screen is all of, digital, uh, all of the digital ads that we put out in, uh, just on JC Deco. This blue square down here is the amount that is dynamic. So even though we know that we can sell loads of this stuff, you know, if we, even though we know that dynamic is the right thing to do for our clients and our brands, that's the amount that we're actually, that's the amount of dynamic digital stuff that we're doing at Jace Deco, which is insane. And this is, this is, I was talking to a guy from Clear Channel, Michael, um, some like, you know, it's, similar, it's a similar story with the other media owners. It's not just Jace Deco. Um, and this is insane, because all these screens are connected to the internet. We know where they are. We know what's going on around them. Um, 
So we should be able to easily deliver contextual, uh, relevant, dynamic ads. So that's kind of why, why the, the, our division dynamic has been come about, um, and, and that's, that's why this dynamic by default. We want to swap this round so it's all blue with a little tiny white square down there. Um, so boo to that. I googled boo, and I couldn't find a fish because I, I was on fish by that point. But this is called a blo this is called a blobfish. It's the, voted the ugliest creature in 2013, the world's ugliest creature, and it certainly is. Um, it kind of quite nice. It is horrific, isn't it? Um, it lives way down at the bottom of the ocean in the dark ages, so I kind of it's kind of relevant. Um, so anyway, well, let's get off that. Um, so why so little dynamic? Why do we think this is happening in, in the industry as a whole? Jason Co is obviously specifically from my point of view. Um, well, this is if you Google, I want to put an ad on Facebook. This is what you get to, and it's three steps. And they describe them here, bang, you can create that button, and in 10 minutes you can put your credit card details in, you can segment your audience, you can, you can upload your video or your image or whatever it is, you can type in your bit of your copy, and bang, you've got an ad on Facebook. Uh, and you know they'll give you immediate results and immediate uh, um, stats about how your ad's doing. Um, same for Twitter. Log in, just choose, your font, choose, the, choose the communities you want to reach, choose what it is you're advertising, put in your copy, put in your image, Away you go. Google, yeah, it's a slightly more horrible interface, but we know that this works because they're one of the world's biggest companies. Um, and you can go in and you can create all this stuff. So this is what brands are used to. This is what they do. Not, not necessarily the marketing director of Tesco, but their agencies are doing this for them. And it's really easy, so they can keep putting all the money in that because they know it's quite easy, it's very measurable, and away you go. Um, on the other hand, dynamic digital out of home, uh, I think, has been, always been seen as something a bit bespoke, a bit niche. Um, it's something that agencies don't always get. Um, and so, you know, it's generally just been seen as a bit of a, you know, just tricky, a bit of a mess, a bit of a whole load of cables that we have to bolt together, and <coughs> sometimes it's bespoke just to one screen. It's just a bit difficult. So, the question then is, what do we do? Um, well... <coughs> We've got two things at Jason Co. Um, Mr. Tim Harvey sat at the back there, is the champion of this one, Smart Bricks. Um, this is not totally out there in the wild, but we are using this at the moment. It's a planning and a buying tool, so it's full of data, it's full of demographics from CACI, Root, and all the others, uh, and various other data sources, which allows a brand or a media buyer to actually plan based on an audience, not based on, I want Oxford Street. You can still do that if you want, but if you, want, if you can... If you actually want to buy an audience of 18 to 30 women for Diet Pepsi, then you can do that, um, which is fantastic. And it's that, again, that is like, more like what Facebook is doing, because it's exactly what you do on Facebook. You log in, pick an audience. So that's great. We have this platform. Uh, that's Tim's baby. Um, this is my baby, which is a platform called Smart Content. So you've done your media buy through Smart Bricks. Uh, or however you want to do it for that matter, but through, let's say through Smart Bricks, um, we've now got a platform which is about the content. What goes into that media buy? This platform has actually been around for about over, just before, I said earlier that we only joined in February the 1st. We haven't just knocked this up in three months. Um, the, we created this over a year ago. It's been around in various forms and guises. Uh, it's now fully integrated into JC Co's infrastructure, into Broadside, into everything else. So it's now part of the system. It's just part of what we do and part of how we are doing our uh, content management um, across the network. So what is it? Well, you can probably guess. It's a content management system, just like you would content manage uh, a website. My background, again, digital agencies and uh, creative agencies, we kind of looked at this from the outside in. For kind of from the perspective of a creative agency or a production company. Um, and basically, we're trying to create something here that's for the, for the whole industry, or wherever you might fit into it. And of course, we've done it as nice, fully web-based. Um, it works on your phone, it works on your tablet. Um, and you don't really need any technical experience to use this. Um, the vision for this is that we will open this up so that anybody can log into this, any brand can log into this and manage their content. At the moment, we're, we're on rollout. Um, sort of like a rollout phase. So we're doing it as a managed service where we'll, we'll use this platform to manage the, the content for a, a brand. 
over time, we want to roll this out. We want to create develop, uh, software developer kits for programmers to create the HTML files and upload them. But that's all under the, under the hood at the moment. What we're doing at the moment is she's doing this as a managed service. So um, this, this breaks down into four layers. This is the boring, relatively boring bit. But there's a lot of problems we get. We all know clients change their minds. So what we're trying to do is streamline the process of just getting content in. So um, you can log into the system. Your production company, your client's production company, has just created a nice ad and cut, done a cut down 10 second version. You can log into this, upload the system, upload the video. It checks, to, it matches that against all of the media buy and says, okay, right, I'm going to transcode that video to the right frames per second, to the right size and all that sort of stuff. If it's an image, it rescales it, it does all that stuff for you. One simple upload, campaign manager gets an alert saying, hey, there's a new bit of content for this campaign, and they press, they approve it, and it goes live. That simple. Relatively boring, though. But you can start doing dynamic campaigns with this, because you could submit another bit of content five minutes later, we approve it, it goes live. So this is the turnaround time of this is sort of a few minutes to get, that, to get your new bit of content on the screen. Where it starts getting more interesting is when you start creating rules and start doing targeting. So you can upload assets, then set up a bunch of rules based on environmental rules, and then start changing it. So you can say, you can then create a rule around weather or temperature or location, um, specific screens, time of day. This is all relatively basic stuff, if you think about it. But nobody's doing it. Very few people are doing it. Only 2.5% of people are doing it. Let's just do a quick example. So this is a, a, I filmed this. In fact, I filmed it slightly sl I actually did it slightly slower than, um, than I would have done if I was doing it normally, so I could talk over it. This is logging into the system. We're going to do a car ad based with a, um, and what we want to do is the, we want to show the car with a top down when it's sunny and show a car with um, driving through a puddle when it's raining. Simple. But it's a really, a really good example uh, just to show you how easy it is. So you log in, you get to see all of your current campaigns running here. This is obviously test data. This campaign has got a 1080 by 1920 in the media buy. And I literally just drag and drop three bits of creative. The first bit of creative is a backup in case for some reason the screen doesn't know what the weather is. Oh, it's lost internet connection. Then you upload, um, then you upload your rainy creative, and then you upload your sunny creative. These creatives, they can be JPEGs, they can be movies, they can be HTML packages. They all get checked. This is this in what you're seeing here is live in real time, um, and it's checked. It's checked all those assets, made sure they're the right shape and size, and then you can preview it. So in a few seconds, you've uploaded all your creative. Now I'm going to create some rules, because I want to change when those different bits of creative are shown. So I'm going to create a rule called bad weather. And in here, you can see we've got weather, temperature, location, time of day. And those are the things we can target on. So this is the bad weather rule. So we're going to select all the things that, um, that are bad weather. We do also have tornado, but we've hidden it. So if you ever do want to do a tornado-based campaign, let me know, because that's definitely a world first. Um, so there we go, I've created the bad weather rule. It's currently zero frames in my media buy match that rule. It was good weather when I, did, when I recorded this. Now we create the good weather rule, and we're gonna just basically do the opposite here. So in the UK, good weather is clear, cloudy, and partly cloudy. <laughs> so we'll create that one. And you can see in my media buy here, this demo media buy, that um, I've got six screens. They all match because it's all currently clear. It's quite cold when I recorded this, but it was clear, so it's good weather. I could have put a temperature rule in there as well. So now I've got two rules, and I've got my bits of creative. I go and select the sunny one, and then down here I say, yep, show that when it's good weather. And then the same for the, um, the rainy creative. And I go down here and I say, okay, show that when it's bad weather. And that's it. That film is two minutes and 34 seconds long, including the login and all that stuff and I recorded it slowly. So in two minutes, basically, you can create a weather-targeted ad, um, and bang, you're done. Um, if we're going to get um, our clients to start doing more dynamic stuff, then we need, we need to make this easier. What we can also do in there, so you saw that we've got weather, temperature, that sort of thing, you can add these things together. So you could create a rule called hot and sunny uh, in the afternoon in London. So you'd select sunny, temperature above 20 degrees, Go to Google, there's a Google map select, so you select the London area, uh, and then you say the day part is afternoon. So you can start adding all these things together, start getting quite detailed. 
Um, hopefully that shows you how easy it is, how simple it is. But then there's more stuff. So social, um, everybody likes a good tweet or an Instagram pic on their ad. So again, this is just something that should be easy and de facto to do. So we've built into the system, you can put in a hashtag, you can put in uh, an account, uh, a handle, and you c the system will then start pulling all the tweets that match that, those, that hashtag or that account into the system, and you can say, uh, somebody can log in, it could be the social media agency, it could be the digital marketing company, it could be us, it could be the client, it doesn't, doesn't matter. They can log in and they can choose which tweets to show. So all of them come into one big column in the middle. They can then just drag and drop and say, yes, 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 no, 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 no. And then all the ones that they approve, a few minutes' time, they're on the screen. This creative here, can obviously we can change that. That can be whatever you like. We're building, we're building everything in HTML now. So the reason, one good reason for that is there's millions of HTML developers. Um, it gives us a lot more flexibility. So this could be scrolling, scrolling tweets, scrolling Instagram images, whatever it is, whatever you want to do. And then the final, the final layer, if you like, uh, is data feeds. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, and you start doing more, you know, really clever stuff. We've built the system, so it's really extensible. There's the core system, but you can add on data feeds around the outside. So, for example, if you had an airline, and they can give you a data feed, um, I know BA do this for a start. Um, if, if, you've got a data, if you can get a data feed from the airline of which flights have the most seats still left on them, still unsold seats, we can pull that in and we can change this to say to change the price and change the, uh, the destination. So we can automatically do that. A um, little, bit, little bit of data integration into, uh, on the outside and then build this, build this HTML creative and it's done. We've made it really, really simple to do. Uh, another lovely example for this, and I so want to do something like this, so if anybody's got, if anybody knows of somebody who wants to do this, let me know. For example, John Lewis, if they've got, um, they've got an online presence, and if, they've got, if they can give us a data feed of what people are currently searching for online, then we could change the screens to show the most popular thing that's being searched for online. Because there's no way you can predict that coffee, coffee machines are really, really, really um, popular online at the moment. Because maybe there was a TV program last night about coffee, I don't know. But we can get that data feed, we can pull it into here, and bang, you've got, you've got everything, you're, you're covered. So just a few case studies. We integrated with a company called Flightstar. Oh, I should say as well, all of these data feeds that we have, so the weather and, and the location, all that sort of stuff, that's just in part of the system. And as we go along, we're adding more standard data into it. So we're going to add things like uh, uh, demographic data. Um, we're going to add the fl various flight data. So you'd be able to say, you know, if, if this screen is a, if at, a, at a departure gate where people are going to Chicago, show this. If, it's, if they're going to the Middle East, show that. So we can start doing rules based on flight data, both departures and arrivals, uh, demographic data as well. Um, for this example, we integrated with a company called Flystats, pulled their data in, and it tells us basically that on this baggage carousel, these bags have come from Q8. So we can do, somebody, somebody else coined this phrase, it's not my phrase, but mass personalization I quite like. There's 200 people who just got off this flight from Q8, and British Airways can give them a relatively personalized message, say, hey, welcome to London, everyone. Um, and then it said, uh, and then we gave them a suggested thing to do. So, so go, to, go and visit a pop-up Brixton market, um, and that was based on the weather. So if it was a sunny day, it was something to do outside. If it was a rainy day, it showed something, uh, something to do indoors, like a pub lunch or something. So this is quite nice. So as well as doing the current, the current weather, we can also, the, the weather data set is, is global. So we can do the current weather, but we can also do the forecast weather as well. So this was based for Tesco, and we looked at the weather for tomorrow, and we said, hey, it's going to be nice tomorrow. Why don't you go and buy a football? Or, good news, it's raining tomorrow. Go and buy some DVDs and some popcorn. Really simple, but contextual, relevant, and helpful in, in many ways. Uh, this is launching today, uh, starting to roll out across our network. Um, of course, we always sell all of our ad inventory, but just in case, that small, small time, that small moments when we don't quite sell everything, we, we're celebrating the 400th anniversary of uh, Shakespeare. With, uh, we've taken loads of different quotes from Shakespeare, all based around the weather. Uh, we've tagged those and categorized those, put them all into the system, so that in whatever location it is, based on the current weather, it shows a relevant Shakespeare quote and the forecast. And finally, I think, so this is in Denmark. So we're not just in, like I said, we're a global division. We, we're not just, uh, not just working with the UK guys. Um, we are out there in Denmark and we're talking, working with a whole bunch of other countries. 
This is live in Denmark at the moment. The whole point of this was they've got four videos. They've uploaded, they've done all this themselves. We just gave them the platform. They've gone and done it. It's that easy. And there's a video for the morning, video for the evening. And then there's two videos based on uh, for the afternoon. One is for lollipops for if it's above 20 degrees. One is, for, one is for something else, salad or something, if it's below 20 degrees. So really simple. And this is just to start. Um, we're, the UK team is currently using this um, for all of our start to use this for all of our scheduling and, and ad management. We can now very simply just add in simple rules, um, and it's available now. So hopefully, using this, providing something like this, and trying to take the same kinds of models of Facebook and Google, where we're trying to make everything easy for people to do, we might hopefully get to dynamic by default, um, which will mean that we have less of this, slightly more wahoo. Thank you.